Okay guys, welcome back to tutorial number 22. And in this video, let's have a look at some of the built-in validations for model-driven forms. Now, Angular provides a validators class that supports some built-in validations. So let's go ahead and import that. So we're here in app.component.ts next to form control. I'm also going to specify another class called validators. And let's perform the exact same validation that we did with the template driven form. So over here, the first thing we need to do is make this name field mandatory. So every form control can accept a second parameter, which is the list of validations for that particular form control. So over here next to Brandon, I'm going to specify a second parameter and that is going to be validators dot required so basically now this name form field is mandatory now in our HTML let's go back over here we can add a reference to this input element let's call this ref name and then I can specify with the bold tag the different classes that this input element is going to have so double curly braces and ref name dot class name so let's have a look I'm gonna save this and head over to the browser and there you go form control ng untouched ng pristine and ng valid now this is valid because this right now has a value but let me remove the value and there you go ng invalid now this is because the name field has to have a mandatory input and when it is blank it is in the invalid state now again, we can make use of these classes to apply any CSS that we wish to inform to the user whether the form control is valid or invalid. So in our app.component.ts, let's go ahead and add those tiles again. So styles, there's going to be an array within square brackets, back ticks, and the first one I'm gonna say, let's see, input for every input element with ng invalid class I'm going to say border left 5 pixel solid red and every input with ng valid class I'm going to say border left 5 pixel solid green so now when I save this and head over to the browser let's wait for it to refresh and there you go all of them are right now valid and if I remove this branded name it becomes an invalid form control but again this is good but we still need to display an appropriate message to the user that tells him what is wrong with this input control so for that we need to go back to our HTML form and add a div tag so I'm gonna remove this class name we don't need that anymore we understood the purpose of it so over here I'm going to add a div tag. Now this div tag is going to have a structural directive. So this is going to appear in the DOM only based on a certain condition. Now what is the condition? The condition is that it should have the error raised from the required validator class. So first we need to first we need a reference to this input control. So user for dot controls of name and dot has error required and I'll explain this I'll explain in just a second I'm just gonna add the class as well so class is equal to alert alert danger and then I'm gonna say please enter a name so basically what we are trying to do is we know that we have a model called user form and this user form model has several controls so dot controls and we are trying to find a control called name and if this name has an error which is raised by this required attribute or required condition only then we are going to display this div tag and what is it going to contain it's going to contain please enter a name so let's see how this works. I'm going to save this. Let's go back to the browser. Right now, it's Brandon. And when it becomes invalid, it's going to say, please enter a name. And when I enter something, it goes away. 
So that is how you display an error message for a form control. Now similarly, we can add multiple validations. So let's go back to app.component.ts and we can add validations for minimum length and maximum length. So now this validators required or the second parameter becomes an array of validations. So over here, it's going to become an array and we can specify the other validations. So validators dot min length and I need the min length to be four and validators dot max length and I want that to be 10. All right, so minimum length of four characters, maximum length of 10 characters. So let's also go back to our component.html and display the appropriate message. So I'm gonna paste this twice and name.hasError min length and has error max length. So let's save this and head over to the browser. So Brandon is valid. None of the validations are messed up. I'm gonna remove this it says, please enter a name. I'm gonna enter three characters, so ABC, and it still says, please enter name because I did not change this message. I'm gonna say, please enter at least four characters. And then over here, I'm gonna say, name cannot exceed 10 characters. So now let's save this, go back to the browser, clear the name, it's going to say please enter a name. Let's enter something, so ABC, and it's going to say please enter at least four characters. So ABCD, and it's fine. So E, F, G, H, I, J, and 10 characters is still fine. H, I, J, K, when I do a K, it says name cannot exceed 10 characters. So now, based on the appropriate error condition, we are displaying the error message. All right, and one final validation that I really want to show is the pattern validation, and I want to show that for the postal code because it is slightly different. Now over here, I'm gonna add, let's see, I'm gonna add first in the app.component.ts, I'm gonna say the postal code, now initial value is going to be null, I don't need a default value, but then I'm gonna add validators.pattern, so pattern, and what is the pattern? It should be a five digit number. So we're gonna start off with a number that is between one and nine, and then four more numbers that are between zero and nine. So there you go. Now let's handle this in our HTML. So in our class form group, I'm gonna add this div tag. So let me just copy paste it. So over here, but here's, so I'm gonna say, what is the error, the pattern matching? So postal code needs format is five digits. But here's how we find the form control. So this ngf user form dot controls, but if you have a look, this postal code is nested inside address. And this address is inside user form. So user form dot controls of address, and this address has controls, and the control that we need is called pink postal code. So, and the error needs to be caused by the pattern. So when I save this now and head over to the browser, all right, now if I enter one, two, three, it says postal code format is five digits. So three, four, five, and it is gone. And similarly, Brandon, if I remove everything, it says please enter a name. But again, we can still submit a form even if the form is in the invalid state. So to fix this, just go to the button tag and add the disabled property. So disabled, and when is it disabled? When the form is invalid. So this is going to be equal to not of user form dot valid. So when I save this and refresh, and when the user form is invalid, there you go, submit is not clickable anymore. And when I enter something valid, we can submit the form. So there, there you go. 
That's how you perform some of the basic validations with model driven forms and also submit only a valid form. All right, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and until next time, stay tuned.